Hey, everyone, and welcome to Keep Advancement right here on iHeartRadio. It is a podcast and one you don't want to miss tonight. Um, I'm Miss Coco Bowden, the instructor, and we are we have actually been talking about this since last week, women and money. Women and money, you know, when it comes down to finances, we don't realize sometimes how much we go overboard until we we are head and heels over debt. So the objective of this class is to get you to see your financial truth and also your financial money trail. And um, let me go ahead and pray us in. Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much, Lord, for opening our eyes this morning, for giving us a brand new day, a new start, Lord. Lord, we thank you for every heart that is on the line tonight. We thank you for every heart that will hear this broadcast later on, um, whenever they hear it. Lord, we ask right now that you will send down your Holy Spirit, to help us, Lord, to anoint us all where we can have a greater understanding of how to spend our finances and who our real supporter is, which is you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I ask the self to be removed, and, Lord, I ask that you would lift these lips up that I have, God, that it would speak your standards, not my standards. Let it be all about you, God, on tonight. Lord, we are so thankful for your grace and mercy for allowing us one more day, another chance. We're, we thank you for the food and shelter and even down to the clothing, God, and the small things that we take for granted, Lord. Lord, we come to you with a heart of thanksgiving, God a heart of thanksgiving, and also a heart of love, God, for one another. Lord, we ask that you bless this class. Bless this class and send increase to this class. Increase knowledge, O oh God. Increase wisdom, O oh God. Increase um, students who really want to learn what is your will, what is your way, God, so they can be free so that no more chains can hold them down. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you right now. If there be any sick on this line, God, we ask that you heal them. Touch them, Lord, like no one else can, from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet, God. We ask for you to move every infirmity. We speak to anyone who may be having fevers and headaches. that They will be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we are so gracious. Gracious to be here tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, ladies. So um, we have been talking about the financial um, scope. Did anybody get to do the financial scope and the spin sheet and also the financial SWOT analysis? That was a whole lot. It actually was a whole lot, y'all. And Once I got to doing mine, I said, you know what, I better come back and break this down for them, exactly what goes into the SWAT, because when I started doing my strengths and stuff, when I started doing it all, it was so much coming that I was like, oh, my goodness, ain't no telling what they have the right to. So I want to go back and break down exactly what this financial SWAT is, and I may go a little bit over the financial um, scope. Did you get a chance to do yours, Amanda? Um, I got some parts and pieces done. Okay, okay. So I'm just going to go over this real quick with you. Um, the strengths. Whenever you get to write about the strengths that you have, financial strengths that you have, when it comes down to your SWOT analysis, and remember we did add in the extra one, um, opportunities and obstacles. Um, the strengths is what positive things or situations move you closer to your financial goal. And whenever you're talking about your strengths, you want to list any resources or capabilities that you could use for financial advantage in order to help you reach your financial goal. So if y'all have not sought a financial goal, which I didn't assign that to you, but you can go ahead and do that, um, go ahead and set you a financial goal. Um, whatever it is that you want to do, that goal will also be in your scope. If you did, if you didn't do your scope yet, that goal should be in your scope. Um, and then uh, the strengths also include what companies or products 
or helping you. And when I talk about companies or products in our personal everyday life, I'm talking about what apps can you use to help you get coupons, um, can you use your tax money? Is that one of your resources that you want to use to catch up on bills or, or pay debt off? Are you using debt consolidation companies? Are you borrowing loans, banks? Um, any type of service that's going to help you reach your financial goal, you can write that down. Any grants. Um, and people can be resourced. You know, people themselves, whether it's friends or neighbors or, you know, someone you're in a relationship with, Friends, you know, they are also also resources. They may know somebody who knows somebody. So don't be afraid to ask people whenever it comes down to um, reaching your financial goals that have more um, experience at it than you do. It's a lot of people out here who have a tons of experience, experience with um, financial goal setting and also helping people achieve them. And not only that, they have their own testimonies of how they went through financial situations and came out on top. It's always good to go back and just ask the regular people around you, okay? And also in your financial strength, um, you need to write down what unique co um, qualities do you have. What type of unique qualities do you have? And when we're talking about unique qualities, are you a person that can, like, bake really good and, and have a, a bake sale and raise money, you know, stuff like that? Um, is there a way that you can sell things? You know, what unique qualities do you have? Are you a good spokesman? It's always something that God has given us. God has given us all talents. So there are several talents out here that we're just not using, and you'll be surprised that once you start using your talents, that God will continue to add and add to that, and it will make room for you, and it will take care of you. Okay, the next thing will be in your strengths, assets. What assets do you have? And, you know, that is actually financial language right there in accounting, assets. Um, what assets can you sell to help you reach your financial goals? What do you have now that's already paid for that can help you reach the financial goal that you're trying to get to? If you're trying to pay off a debt and you have an extra vehicle or something that you're not using and you know you're not going to use it and it's just going to sit there and go down, why not sell it now before the value goes down any further? If you haven't used that car three, four years, I'm talking to myself now. <laughs> If you haven't used that car three, four years, you know, don't keep letting it devalue. Instead, put it to some use to help you come up out of your financial um, situations. So that would be your strength. That's what you're looking for whenever I'm saying strength. Okay, the next thing is weakness. Um, weaknesses are your internal financial ailments, which means what's happening with inside your household and stuff. What debts do you have? What lack of income do you have? Cash deficiency. You know, a lot of a lot of things can be uh, a lot of interest can be deleted, done away with if you're able to pay for things with cash. So if you have any type of cash deficiencies, you need to write that down as your weakness, meaning that you don't always have cash on hand or either whenever you do have cash on hand, you spend it on lottery tickets or you buy, you know, little knickknacks here and there that add up, that would um, contribute to you being weak in your cash deficiencies. And that would keep you from purchasing products or, or whenever you do need cash, and you have to run to the ATM because you didn't spend the cash that you did have on hand. So that's a weakness. And another weakness is, um, well, actually, that's all the weakness. <laughs> I said it all at one round. Okay. <laughs> so the next thing is financial opportunities in your SWOT analysis. What are your financial opportunities? And when I'm talking about opportunities, I'm talking about attainable actions that you have not taken yet or maximized. And this could be income. Have you have you um not taken a job or, you know, maybe there's some side work that somebody wants you to do that you didn't, you know, cash in on. Um investments. Do you have investments in stocks and bonds, you know, that you can cash in to help you get you get out of this present situation that you're in. A lot of people will hold on to stocks and bonds and go hungry. 
and not realizing that even if that stocks and bonds is drawing interest, it's no good if you're dead. It's no good if you laid up in the hospital and you didn't got so sick you can't do anything about it, you know. Um, so um, pay attention to whatever investments you have. Um, another financial opportunity would be debt re reduction. Are you writing in there things that you can do to reduce the debt? Like how can you do it? Who can help you do it? Are you talking with your debtors? Are you asking them to um, waive certain fees? Sometimes they're they're waive activation fees and, and um sometimes they're waive like those little toll expenses on phones and stuff. They'll do that. Light companies will take any interest that you have and add it to your bill. So those are financial opportunities that a lot of people don't even know about. They don't know that you can call your light company and say, hey, did my deposit that I put in at, when I first got my lights turned on, how much interest has it drawn so far? And tell them that you want to apply it to your light bill if your light bill has gotten really high. And you'll be surprised if you've had doggone um, a deposit paid in for at least 10 years. That's like close to three, four hundred, five hundred dollars right there. So you need to definitely put that down as an opportunity. Um, interest reduction. Interest reduction. You can always go back to the place where you got your car, or you know, um, you can go back to the place where you got your car and get them to um, sign a paper that says how much would they pay off, how much is the payoff, and when they give you what the payoff is, that Payoff is what you can go to the bank with, like these credit credit unions and stuff. You can go to the bank with that, and they would give you a cheaper interest rate. And they'll take it to the, whoever that dealer is, and they'll negotiate whatever they got to negotiate and get that down for you. So, see, that's an opportunity right there. If you're making high car payments to the dealer, if you go to a credit union and you have an account, that credit union, guess what, can pay that car off for you, and you pay the credit union, and it's less interest. And you can opt to have um, lower payments or higher payments. You, of course, you know the higher your payment, the quicker you're going to pay it off, and the less interest you're going to accumulate. And the next thing is possible discounts or coupons available, financial opportunities. People are throwing hundreds of dollars away a month. Every time you get a receipt at these restaurants, at these grocery stores, there, that receipt has money on it. That coupon that says take this survey and you can come to KFC and get a free Go Cup, that's money. I, I feel that one today, by the way. <laughs> that's <laughs> money. Because you know, you, you know you're going to be eating at that restaurant again, and those coupons are good for at least 30 days. Some of them are only good for that week, but a majority of them are good for at least 30 days. That is money right there. That's an opportunity. You can go to places like Food Line, Harris Teeter, and uh, Walmart. Does Walmart have it? I think Walmart does the survey where you might can um, enter to win. It's even worth a shot of doing that as well. You know, you go to those stores, those clothing stores, and they will give you coupons for the next time that you come back. The reward cards, are you taking advantage of the reward cards? That is a financial opportunity right there. When you gain so many rewards, rewards. Um, Kmart hit me up in my email and said you have $18 in, in your rewards um, cards that you can spend. So that's money right there. You got to open your eyes to the opportunities that are right before you. They ain't even hiding them. They just handing them to you in your hand. But sometimes we're so fast and we don't want to do anything. We want to be lazy when it comes down to our money. We don't realize that we are throwing away money every time we put a receipt in the trash that has a coupon on it. Especially if it's something that we know we use and that we like to, like to get all the time. And, and that would be for the possible discounts, too. And another financial opportunity is uh, say that you need some, some type of work done and you know that you have a trustworthy friend that you can go to 
who does great quality work with low pay, you know, that's an opportunity right there. For me, this month I spent um, I spent actually around 